hello uh, welcome to my first video under blood physiology so human life is dependent on water so humans are 75 percent water by mass at infancy and 50 to 60 percent water in adulthood and uh, the fluid distribution in the body is divided into two we have that which is found inside of cells which is called intracellular fluid or cell cytoplasm it constitutes 40 percent of the total body weight and we have what is called extracellular fluid which is found outside of cells uh, and this extracellular fluid in adults uh, it constitutes 20% uh, of the total body weight and is divided into plasma which we can which is found inside of blood vessels and uh, interstitial fluid which is found between cells the plasma being 5% and the interstitial fluid being 15% uh, take note these values are variable and uh, they are found to be in ranges so 12% uh, is also a close or a proximal value within the normal uh, interstitial uh, total body weight okay so blood composition so the amount of blood varies according to weight and size a 70 kg man has 5 to 6 liters of blood and our blood is divided into two components we have the plasma uh, component which constitutes 55 percent this is the plasma is the fluid part of blood and uh, we have a cellular component which constitutes 45 percent and uh, the cells include red blood cells white blood cells platelets and plasma blood pla uh, and platelets and uh, the red blood cells can also be called erythrocytes the white blood cells can also be called leukocytes and the platelets can also be called thrombocytes now plasma is made up of 99 percent water uh, this value is not fixed but uh, is just above 90 and um, one percent comprising of uh, dissolved solids so this percent is also variable but it's always less than 10 right and um, it contains uh, solutes uh, such as proteins um, that is dissolved solids proteins electrolytes uh, vitamins and nutrients okay now the cellular components as I said uh, we have white blood cells red blood cells and platelets so the white blood cells can be divided according to the shape of the nucleus and the presence of granules we have granulocytes which contain granules and we have monocytes which do not contain granules Another granulocytes we have uh, neutrophils eosinophils and basophils and we also have lymphocytes uh, which um, produce uh, antibodies right and as um, stated erythrocytes also called um, red blood cells uh, the distribution in males and females is different this is because males contain a high proportion of testosterone as compared to women and testosterone is a is a is a hormone which stimulates uh, the production of red blood cells right and uh, this is the um, cell average cell content of platelets inside of the body but take note uh, these values are not fixed they are found in ranges in between uh, people except blood right blood um, also has uh, some degree but uh, the values are usually within this uh, this average in normal people so the functions of blood uh, so there are three basic um, functions that is transportation regulation and protection now transportation we see that blood contains red blood cells which contain hemoglobin which um, has uh, the capacity to bind and release carbon dioxide and oxygen for transportation right and nutrients are present um, uh, transportation of nutrients since blood contains plasma which is a fluid and also transportation of hormones and waste products under regulation 
we see that um, the blood uh, regulates temperature, hemostasis, and and also homeostasis and acid-base balance, right? Because of mechanisms uh, which we shall um, explain further in the upcoming videos. We see also that blood uh, protects uh, since it contains white blood cells. Yes, it co it carries immune cells, which are these white blood cells. It also contains cytokines, hormones, and clotting factors. Clotting factors uh, they work well um, to impair the blood flow, which is necessary for hemostasis, which protect the body from hemorrhaging. Right. So uh, lastly, under introduction, we also see that um. The process of uh, the formation of and the maturation of blood is controlled, is governed and controlled by a process called hematopoiesis. And uh, this process takes place in certain systems inside the liver, the spleen, and the bone marrow. And also, uh, the process uh, it starts with a single pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell. So this cell can eventually divide into any cell of the blood lineage and bone marrow lineage. Uh, the lineage uh, specific commitments occur after activation of specific transcriptional programs, right? So we, we can only get to a certain pathway if we have certain activation by certain transcriptional programs. So these transcriptional programs can either be cytokines, that is chemical messengers or growth factors. For example, the blood lineage or the erythroid lineage, it requires erythropoietin as a transcriptional factor which activates uh, this process. Then we have um, thrombopoietin uh, as a transcriptional factor which activates uh, the platelet lineage. So that's all on um the introduction to blood physiology right so on the next video we're going to talk about plasma thank you